Hello, and welcome to the latest episode of the Jamf After Dark podcast, a podcast to introduce you to the people at Jamf, learn about what we're up to when it comes to managing and securing Apple devices, along with what is happening in the IT landscape. I'm your co-host, Kat Garbus, joined by my co-host, Sean Rabbit. Hi, co-host Kat Garbus. Nice to see you again. It's been a hot minute since uh, since last time. I, I don't think anything exciting has really happened in the technology world since we last met at all, right? There's There hasn't been any new announcements <laughs> from Apple or like a global outage or anything like that, right? Just, just no, just sure. another day. Yeah, okay. just another day. Nothing's well, that's good. really gone on. Yeah. I, I'm glad that we have something for our seven listeners then to, to be able to play with then and listen to today. So today we're going to talk about the best event that happens in all of creation. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is the Jamf Nation User Conference. Jnock, please welcome me. Uh, help me. Blah, 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 whatever I just said. Remember, I'm a professional podcaster. Please well, join me in welcoming Jeff Ovik, Anna Hedstrom. Can you introduce yourselves and tell us what you do here at Jamf? Hey, uh, thank you very much. Uh, happy to be here. Uh, my name is Jeff Ovik. I am the Senior Event Specialist here at Jamf. I have worked on JNUC for, uh, well, this will be my 10th JNUC. So I've worked on JNUC uh, for since 2014. And I'm Anna Hedstrom, also a senior event specialist at Jamf. This will be my fourth JNUC, but really my third uh, helping plan. I started right before JNUC in 2021, but my specialty for JNUC is I manage all of our content that you hear in the breakout spaces and the interactive labs. Awesome. Well, welcome back. We're excited to have you and we're excited to talk about Jane Up 2024. So um, what can we expect this year? What are what are some things that come to mind that we just can't wait to to unfold at Jane yeah, elevator pitch it for me. Tell me why my boss needs to convince be convinced to uh, send me to JNUC. Well, not me, but, you know, the, the royal me, them, the seven listeners. Well, we have all kinds of things, I think, that we're going to get into on the, um, on the podcast today. Um, but, uh, of course, we've got a lot of the familiar things that you would recognize at JNUC. Uh, over the years, we'll have all kinds of sessions. We'll have our brain dates. Uh, we have our... Jamf Nation party, um, and then all kinds of new surprises. So one of the big things that we've changed um, in the last couple of years is there was this uh, small event that happened in the world where everyone got uh, locked inside their houses forever and ever. And we had a virtual conference. And last couple of years, we've been doing uh, a virtual alongside of in person too, which has been interesting. So um, we doing that again this year? We are not. We have done away with virtual for 2024 and moving forward. I know we appreciate that individuals like the convenience sometimes of being able to attend virtually. I myself like to hop on a webinar when I can. But as a team and a company, we kind of looked at industry trends and decided to solely focus on in-person this year. Um, if you really look at the core of JNUC, it's about coming together, sharing ideas, networking, getting hands-on with our products, getting to meet Jamps in the Jamf booth. And these were all elements that we just cannot replicate in the virtual setting. So we have made the decision to focus all of our resources and energy on the in-person experience and continue to grow that year over year. Uh, I do want to mention, though, our content at JNUC. I'm not biased by any means, but it's invaluable. And we want to make sure everybody has access to that. So. New this year, we will have an on-demand library that will be available 30 days after JNUC, and it is complimentary. So, of course, we'd love to see everyone in Nashville, but if you can't be there, you can sign up to be notified when this library goes live on the JNUC site, or just look at your inbox about a month later and you'll find access to that library. That's so great news, too, because it's like if you have so many events going on, you probably want to go to two sessions at the same time. And I just they'll like to be able to catch up on the stuff that I missed. Absolutely. Yeah, it will be beneficial for attendees who are there in person to be able to check out that content as well. I like the on-demand library, too, for, for that reason, mm -hmm. Sean. Either maybe you also can't attend. Maybe it's just not happening for whatever reason. So click on everything uh, if you can't attend in person. But uh, we hope to see you there. And 
I d- actually drove through Nashville last year on my way to Florida, stopped stopped there for a little bit, stopped by the Parthenon. I think it's because I'm Greek and that's just what we do. We go to Greek-like objects, uh, me and my family. So I I really enjoy Nashville. How, how did we pick it? I, I'm always curious on the origin story of the JNUC conference and the evolution of, hey, we were in San Diego, then we were in Austin. How did we land on Nashville? Well, yeah, actually, that's interesting because we do pick our JNUC locations actually quite um, quite a bit of time out. Like we have um, our JNUC, uh, we have our JNUC locations actually sourced through 2027. And of course, I know the next question is going to be where are they at? And of course, my next answer is I can't tell you. <laughs> but um, but yeah, so we, we do book, we do book them farther out. Um, but we did pick Nashville, of course, because it's a really central location and easy for our customers to get to. They've got a great uh, airport and transportation options, uh, have really excellent room rates on the hotels. And of course, um, Nashville has more entertainment on Broadway than probably Broadway. <laughs> So I'm um, really excited uh, to bring our uh, customers someplace like that with all the different options in town. I love it. I, I think it's a great place to be. I love that it's kind of in the middle of the country. Hey, we all traveled out west and we went a bit south and now we're kind of in the middle. And I, I really think that's nice. I was also looking at the hotel options and I love that we have a hotel first off discount that we're offering to JNUC attendees again. And I love that we also have offerings that kind of fit any budget. I think the the one hotel I was eyeing is like maybe 169 all the way up to like maybe just a little under 300. And I was curious, I, I haven't had the luxury to stay at any of these hotels. Usually when I've gone to Tennessee, I've done that fun thing called couch surfing and hanging out with my friends that are there. <laughs> but, but which hotels would you recommend uh, or are some favorites? Maybe there's a favorite pool or, you know, access uh, to to the conference center. And I was curious if, if based off of budget and everything, what are some hotels that, that we would recommend? So I would say, uh, I would say, first of all, my favorite hotel would be the Renaissance. Um, it's the largest block. But not only that, it's actually where we, we have... Sorry, it's the largest block, so you actually see most of the attendees there. You're going to see all your friends showing up in that lobby. I would expect to see a lot of activity um, in the lobby bar of that hotel. Uh, aside from that, uh, the Omni, right across the street, very convenient. But really, all of our hotels are within walking distance, very close to the convention center, and within budget. Uh, we actually do have a listing of all of our hotels listed on our registration site under the hotel page where they can, uh, we can take a look and see at all the pricing. Now, I do have one complaint about the hotel listings, though. None of them tell me where I can park a 28-foot Airstream. That's the most important thing, all right? So. <laughs> Good luck with that one, Sean. Good luck yeah. making a turn in downtown Nashville with that thing. Uh, <laughs> I am not bringing the Airstream to this one. I, I do have a personal story here. I, I'm doing what we call threading the needle on this one. So I have actual vacation, then a trip to Minneapolis to go see all the SEs, then VTO, and then JNUC. So I am literally flying out of multiple different airports to multiple different destinations to make sure I can get to where I need to be. It's going to be crazy. By the way, I'll also be there. I mean, and now besides that, why would you want to go to JNUC other than to see, you know, Kat and myself doing a live recording of the Jamf After Dark podcast? I mean, that'll get at least seven people to sign up for JNUC. Oh, come on. We'll see more than that there, I'm sure. <laughs> no, I, uh, why attend JNUC? I mean, of course you want to attend JNUC. It is the place to be for um, Mac admins. It is where you want to go. Uh, you get to go there and meet Jamps, and you'll get to meet other IT professionals face to face. So you're going to be meeting with your peers, and you'll get to have all those sort of organic conversations. Like, so it won't just be the questions within the sessions. You're going to actually have some time to network with the other attendees at the conference, and you'll get to sort of participate in what we like to call that hallway track. And then, so really, it's it's about that sense of community. That's really why you want to go to JNUG. I'm glad you mentioned that hallway track too there because uh, it, it that was probably the biggest downfall that I made last year. It's like I scheduled myself too much. 
And so like, I didn't have a chance to really have those hallway conversations. A whole bunch of people were like, hey, rabbit, 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 come say hi. Uh, yeah, leave yourself some space in some of these, uh, some of your day too. You will run into people. Go walk the, go walk the show floor. It's a nice, convenient place to meet people. Um, you know, you can just have that conversation like, oh, rabbit, we've been talking about platform single sign on at such and such. We saw you at Penn State. Let's, uh, let's chat some more. We'll have the brain dates too. Can you talk a little bit about what uh, what brain dates do? Yeah, so we do have brain dates again this year. Brain dates are small topic based networking groups that we'll have again at JNUC this year. So we've had them the last uh, three years, I think, and so now this year we'll be bringing them back again. Uh, they've been very successful, and the really great thing is you can actually sign up for them before uh, JNUC starts, before you get there. So. When you arrive on site, you'll actually, uh, you can have some of those already booked and scheduled. Which was sweet too, because when I did a couple of brain dates, it it wasn't just like a stump the chump type of thing. You know, it wasn't here, you know, welcome to car talk and I'm the chump. Uh, it was, it was like, Hey, there's actually like six customers there that were having a conversation. And, uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, some of them, uh, some of them fill up pretty quickly and then if they're really popular, we'll actually, uh, do a second brain date on the same topic or they'll, a lot of times we'll have brain dates that will, uh, be sort of complementary to a session that has just happened where maybe perhaps the speaker will then go into the brain date lounge and, uh, kind of talk more about the topic. Yeah. If there's any speakers out there, any speakers presenting her actually listening to our lovely podcast here, which I hope they are one of our seven listeners. Um, that worked out really great for me when we were in San Diego, I scheduled a brain date right after uh, one of my presentations. Mm -hmm. And it was like the Pied Piper leading everybody to the brain date lounge, which was kind of frightening because I think the brain date people were like, there's only supposed to be six of you. It's like, well, here's 20 people. <laughs> so. Well, I, well, yeah, actually we are going to do something a little bit different this year. We're going to have slightly the op opportunity once an hour to have kind of a super group in our brain date lounge where we will have a slightly larger group um, on the hour or maybe not on the hour, but hourly. We'll have uh, a slightly larger group to uh, kind of help uh, f facilitate a special topic. Uh, and I guess, you know, for customers, who are attending, it's always great to see them, always great to connect with them. There may be some folks, though, who are interested in Jamf, but they're not a customer yet. Do you need to be a customer to attend? So we do get that question quite often, and um, we love to have non-customers attend JNUC as well. Uh, so you absolutely do not need to be a customer to attend JNUC. Uh, the kind of things that we offer our, you know, innovative problem solving, uh, common workflows, uh, and third party tool resources. So I think a lot of people can get use out of uh, what we have offered at JNUC. So even if you're just curious to come and see what uh, JAMP is about, there's no better way to check it out than attending JNUC. Perfect. And I'm glad we're bringing some things back, right? We're bringing brain dates back. The hallway talks never going away. It's just always a thing and always part of JNUC. But what about something we haven't done yet? What are some of the maybe new things we're bringing to JNUC 2024? Where someone's been to JNUC, they're like, hey, excited for the old stuff. We love it. We're coming back for more. But what about some of the brand new things we haven't quite done yet? Yeah, of course. So, um, you're right, we've got all the returning favorites, but um, we do have a couple of different options this year. I know we were just talking about um, customers or non-customers attending JNUC. And one thing that we're offering this year, which is different is you can now buy a uh, Tuesday day pass or a Wednesday day pass. Uh, if you just wanna kind of test out JNUC and be there for one day, it's something that we've had questions on over the years. So again, another great option if you are a, uh, if you're a non-customer or maybe you just don't have the time to commit to a full JNUC. So that's a that's a new offering this year. Uh, some other things that we have going on, of course, uh, we are offering uh, the JAMP Level Up program. And if you haven't heard of that, um, uh, what that is, is if you hold a JAMP Certified Tech or if you hold a JAMP Certified Admin Certification for either JAMP Pro version 10, um, you'll have the opportunity to level up your certification to either JAMP 200 or JAMP 300 at JNUG. Uh, it's a free training and the certification class 
It's for anyone who meets those uh, specific requirements. And we have those specific requirements uh, located in the terms and conditions of our registration. So really easy to find when you're going through the registration. It's going to ask you if you want to level up. And then there's a little uh, additional, uh, some information you can read about it. I might know someone who uh, has that JAMP certified tech and might be very interested in, in leveling up. Do you know offhand what the days and what that might look like? Because it sounds like, because normally when we do testing, it's like three days, it's expensive. And um, not not to say people shouldn't do those, but it sounds sure. like this is like a nice little way to speed track your way into getting recertified or getting the more current certification. When are we it doing is. that? It is, and it's and it, it's happening for free, and it's actually happening on that Monday before JNUC starts. So if you're already planning on attending JNUC the 1st through the 3rd of October, you could come in one day early on that Monday and uh, do the Level Up certification. I love it. What, uh, what else do we got going on that might be brand new? So also this year, we're, we're offering the JAMP Global Partner Summit. So if we have any partners that are already attending JNUC on Monday... Sorry, if they're already attending JNIC that week, they could come in on Monday and attend the um, Global Partner Summit. And it's just a great opportunity for our JAMP partners to get together with a group of their peers, um, have some great discussions, uh, see a, a speaker or two, and uh, get some networking together. I'm really excited for that. That one's a little close to my heart just because mm -hmm. I'm on the channel team and I work with partners for my day job here at Jamf. Believe it or not, I, I don't podcast all day long for Jamf. And um, I'm really excited for that. I think this is something that is really leveling up our partner program. Kudos to Israel and Tatiana on our team who have been putting a lot of tireless hours in, in putting that together and making it happen. So if you are a partner at Jamf and you haven't registered, please register for not only JNUC, but for the Global Partner Summit. There's going to be some really great information that you'll be privy to. There's going to be some really awesome speakers. I don't know if I can say who they are yet, so that's why I'm being a little cryptic and a little mysterious. But please register for that. And there's also going to be an award ceremony, so we're going to offer some recognition to our partners as well. And there's going to be some sessions, I believe, where you can learn some new information. So the Global Partner Summit, it's brand new, hot off the presses. It's kind of being weaved into JNUC as well. So register for JNUC, register for the Partner Summit. That's my shameless pitch. And and I will just throw out there uh, for you, Kat, on uh, jamp.com slash JNUC, there is a... Uh, tab on that page for the partner summit and people can get more information there. I love it. And then of course, we're going to have the Jamf booth there too. So there'd be even more. So like customer success, you can come in and have a chat with them uh, face to face. And uh, I get to come in early and set up all the network. So when the network explodes, you can blame me in the hallways. I'm sorry, but shouldn't explode though. It's been pretty good last couple of years. Makes me happy. So let's talk a little bit about uh, some sessions that might be coming up. Um, any new sessions or any of the sessions that you're looking most forward to there? I was quickly going to look up everything that Kat and Sean are doing, but <laughs> it's a little overwhelming. We should probably put a bingo card together for where we can find the two of you at JNUC because you're going to be all over the place. Um, I do want to call out, we have a, key, a new keynote format this year. I'm pretty excited about this. If you remember... In past years, our keynote was about 90 minutes, and it included a lot of information for both our commercial and education attendees. We've decided to split this up a little bit. So we'll still start JNUC off strong with our opening keynote. It'll be a little bit shorter than it has been in the past. And then back in that keynote space, we'll have our commercial and security State of the Union. We'll have some education sessions happening at that same time. So all of our education customers can be attending those breakout sessions. And then following that, we'll have our education state of the union in that keynote space. I'm excited for this. I think it's gonna, our attendees will be happy that everything that they are sitting in on is going to be relevant to their organization. And I do wanna call out these three sessions will be live streamed. So again, we'll have our on-demand library 30 days after for breakouts, but if you can't be in Nashville, you can live stream the keynote and those two State of the Unions. So check out the JNUC website in August. We'll have more information on how you can be joining those live streams. 
another one uh, that I've been hearing the SE team uh, here at Jamf talking about getting ready for all of these uh, interactive hands-on labs that we've been doing. And I, I know that was, a, I got to participate in one last year, uh, helping out with being a presenter there. And it's so cool watching a room full of people just wailing on a topic. What, what do we got going on there this year? Yeah, absolutely. They were so popular last year that they filled up quickly. It's a smaller format and we didn't want that um, to happen again. I think some people weren't able to attend. So we are offering two lab rooms this year so we can offer each lab at least once a day. And as they continue to fill up, we'll continue to open more space for those. So hopefully everyone can get hands on with our solutions and products. A uh, couple things to call out. Some of those labs are BYOD. So just take a look at the session description. It'll let you know if you need to be bringing your own device. And then we have a few iOS labs this year where devices will be provided for you. I'm, I love it. I'm a very kinesthetic learner. I have to learn by doing things like I learned to swim by being pushed into the deep end of the pool. It's just, it's just how I personally learn. So mm -hmm. I love the interactive labs. Um, last few years, I know Nick McGullivray, he's a Jamf uh, solution engineer, and he's always done just such a great job educating. So if you're just not quite sure what to expect, it's kind of like, I don't know, following a cooking show, but with uh, technology and Jamf solutions. And I, I think it's really great. So I'm, I'm also curious, though, outside of the interactive labs, I love that we're going to be streaming the State of the Unions. But what are some topics and highlights that folks can expect at JNOC? Yeah, we've got some great focus areas this year. Um, Apple Ecosystem is one. It's going to, those sessions will be exploring the expanding role of the Apple ecosystem, how it continues to transform the way that we work. Um, Apple in a Windows world, I'm excited for this one. Um, so whether you're in a predominantly Windows environment or you are navigating Apple in a Windows world, these sessions are gonna be full of insights, help you optimize that cross-platform management. You'll find a lot of sessions with different workflows. We'll have Mac workflows, mobility workflows. Security, of course, is always a priority, so you'll find a focus area on securing devices with Jamf. And we will also have our integrations focus area. And another that I'm really excited about this year is our community career and culture focus area. And these sessions I think are gonna be a great opportunity if someone wants to step away from a very technical heavy agenda. These sessions will still give you a lot of tan tangible information for you to bring back to your organization and really help you improve the culture of your organization. One session in here, Kat, I do want to give you a plug. We do have the Women in Tech Networking session. And I think this is running a little bit different than it has been in the past. A little more hands-on, is that correct? Yeah, so uh, at Jamf, we like to listen to our customers and the community. And we've had just such a strong focus on DEIB. We've always done something with Women in Technology, but this year we're changing it up. One of, the, one of the things that we had learned from customers were like, hey, we don't know each other very well and there's, there's not as many of us. So how, how, do we, how do we fix that? So myself um, and a few other folks that support DEIB and specifically with women, uh, and we've got Lisette Bull who helps support with our GF Heroes program, we kind of put our notes together and we decided, why don't we find a way to get them to network together? So rather than selecting a couple of women to speak about how they have been a woman in technology, which a lot of us can relate to, and I think that's really good. That's what we've done in the years past. So this year we're making it so we all can get to know each other better and, and have more of a connection and a strong built community. So that's going to be really exciting. So think of it as a, as a networking event session, um, just to have everyone get to know each other better. So you're leaving with hopefully some more friends. So uh, thanks for the shameless plug, uh, Anna. And yeah, I, I am excited for that. That session is near and dear to my heart. Now, this came up as a shock to me being a late model Gen Xer, but apparently there are a group of people out there that haven't been doing this since the Apple IIe. So let's, uh, how technical should we get here in the uh, in the world of, of attendees? What, what do you think is that good place for people to be if they uh, first time attendee maybe? Yeah, all of our sessions do have skill levels associated with them. So they range from 
100 to 400. Uh, 200 sort of that sweet spot. You're going to see 200 has the most sessions. But if you are looking to get very technical, we have sessions in that 300 and 400, about 35 for you to really build up that um, agenda for your two and a half days. But to your point, if you are new to Jamf, maybe you aren't using Jamf yet, um, we will have sessions for you um, soon or maybe when this podcast airs, we're, we'll have some curated sample agendas, which I think will be a great way for people who are a little overwhelmed looking at over 100 sessions. How do I get started? And one of those is going to be that new to Jamf agenda. So take a look at that if you are new. That's going to be what we are suggesting you start with. It's a nice base uh, for your agenda. And you'll find other curated agendas based on industry, product, solutions, skill levels, interests. That's pretty awesome because, I mean, it, you can just go in there and say, I'm an educator. I have no interest in things that are for retail uh, stores or Absolutely. whatnot. So I love it. I love it. It'll narrow it down because there's a lot of good topics happening here, too. Um, what's the format of the presentations for most of these events? So, like, we have presenters, and then what, what goes on there? Yeah, so after? our sessions are all about 45 minutes, our breakout sessions. Um, you will have your presentation, your content, and then there's should be time for live Q&A for each of those sessions. The time allotted for that Q&A really is gonna depend on the speaker and how much content that they're putting into that session slot. Um, but if you're unable to get your question answered during that Q&A time, there are other opportunities as well. I know we talked about that hallway track or as Sean mentioned, just follow that speaker out of that room, <laughs> track, them, <laughs> track them down, get those questions asked. Um, but the brain dates, many of our speakers host follow up brain dates. So a great way to have a little bit more of a one on one interaction with the speaker and talk through that content. And then you can also connect in the app. So Ooh. shameless plug for the app. When does that drop? Uh, that's in August. It is launching very soon. So this month. Awesome. So keep keep an eye on that app. And I like that we have another avenue to connect with those speakers. I also was a room host last year and I was that person in the back of the room being like five minutes with like my hands up just to make sure that there was time for Q&A. So if I'm your room host, apologies, sort of. Sorry, not sorry. Anyways, I want to change a little bit and talk about the party. Uh, I, Ooh, I ask this party. question every time you're here, and I just I want to know what's the details. What can you tell us about the party this year? We are always excited about the Jamf Nation party. Always looking to do something new, fun, different than we haven't done in previous years. So this year we are taking our attendees, and I can tell you where we're going this year. This year, we are going to the Assembly Food Hall, and that is actually right off of uh, Broadway in Nashville. So within really easy walking distance of all the hotels and within a walking distance of Music City Center. So the Assembly Food Hall is going to have tons of different food options, and we're going to have lots of different local eats. So if you're not local, you can maybe figure out, find out what this hot chicken thing is all about. I have no idea, so I'm excited to try it. Um, and then we'll also have like different fun activities and some musical acts because, of course, we're in Nashville. You had me a chicken. You had me a chicken. I'm there. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm an official fat guy. I will eat all the chicken. So I'm, I'm all in on this. We had different reactions, Sean, to the to the Nashville hot chicken. You're like, where's the chicken? I'm like, do I need to bring Tums? I'm here. Like, are they giving out Tums at that like food station? You just do. Curious. You do, Kat, because even the mild was too spicy for me. So just a <laughs> little bit of a caution there. Just bring right. it. I love it. Love it all. Apologies love it. <laughs> to everyone on, on Thursday sessions. Um, I don't know. It's going to, it's going to, yeah, Tums. Pack Tums. Pack a whole thing of Tums. All right. I'm excited. I'm excited to hear more about the music acts. That'll be fun. Um, can we divulge on any of the fun activities or uh, is that yet to be seen? No spoilers there. It's all yet to be seen, but um, I promise a great time will be had by all. All right. I'm going to get a little sentimental. I'm curious. Is there a like either favorite JNUC story or something you just love about JNUC when you attend? whether it's an interaction with a customer, a partner, I'm just curious what, 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 what makes you want to go to JNUC? 
So what's really exciting for me personally, so I, I work at the registration desk. I work with our customers as they're registering through the register, as they're getting registered through the process. I work with our mobile app. So I have a lot of interaction with our attendees trying to help them get registered. So for me, kind of that magic moment and the moment that I really like is when they come through the registration desk and I actually you know, recognize their name and I remember talking to them or emailing with them. And it's kind of like my job is complete. I've gotten you to JNUC. I helped you get here. And now here you go off to Anna to uh, get in some sessions. Uh, mine is in this very similar vein as Jeff's. Since I do work with the content and the speakers, we have about 250 speakers. And whether they know it or not, by JNUC, like I know everyone's names. So it is very cool to put a face to these names and a face to these sessions that we've been working on for, you know, since April. Um, I will say last year, there were a couple of speakers from other countries that brought me chocolates. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> not saying you have to, but that was also <laughs> a fun time. Anna's going back home with an international collection of chocolates. <laughs> um, John, I'm curious for you, what, what, what gets you to JNUC? What do you love if you've got any special moments or, or anything like that? What gets me to JNUC? Uh, most times a 747 on Southwest Airlines. But I mean, why do I like to go there? It's because uh, I get to see all of these people uh, that are that are ba frankly just torsos half the time. It's like, I, you know, like, great, we're in a Zoom meeting. It's like, uh, yeah, but now I've met you and I've talked to you. Just a warning in advance. I want you to know that I am face blind and do not remember anybody's name. So wear your name badge. Thank you. I appreciate that greatly. <laughs> uh, any final tips in advance uh, for people that are planning to attend folks? Boy, from me, I would say um, make sure you register as soon as you can. We actually um, have registration prices going up again uh, September 1st. So I would recommend register now uh, before you see that $200 increase. The other thing I would say is make sure uh, you get your hotel booked because while we do have a lot of great hotel options, they are going fast. And to be clear, you can't book your hotel until you register first, right? That is correct. We do have all the hotel information available on the site um, to, to peruse, but you can't actually get into our hotel block until you've registered for JNUC. And for those who are budget conscious, how much is registration increasing? Sure. So registration for our commercial attendees currently is uh, $13.99. And for our education attendees, it's $11.99. And at the beginning of September, it will go up $200. So it will be $15.99 for commercial and $13.99 for education customers. Anna, how about you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> My tip, of course, is just build out your agenda in advance. There's so much to do. Um, so build out the sessions you want to go to. I didn't really mention we do have spotlight sessions again this year. These are 15 minute sessions taking place in the expo hall. Those will be during breaks and meals. And so you really can fill your whole day with sessions. Um, and then brain dates, you can book those in advance as well. And the beautiful thing about brain dates too, is anyone can host one. So if you're an attendee and you might not be speaking. Maybe you just want to like get together with some people and talk about a topic you enjoy. It doesn't even have to be IT related. Um, book your brain dates and sign up to host brain dates. I literally saw a Harry Potter brain date uh, last year. So like when you say like, hey, if you're just looking to network and like make some friends within the community, someone literally put a Harry Potter uh, brain date out there. I think it was an attendee and they had like 50 new friends. So Yeah. Excellent. I only have one last question, and that is for the seven listeners, because there's got to be somebody in Nashville. So I need a place that I can get my fabulous rhinestone cowboy outfit for J Nuck. And so if someone can mention you. Know, you just you say attention, Sean, and send an email to info at jamf com, and you let me know where I can find and that outfit so I can make it the most fabulous J Nuck ever. That's my only ask. Well, perfect. Uh, I really want to thank Anna and Jeff for joining us and we're excited for JNUC. It is something that's like, I call it Jamf Christmas personally, but um, I, I'm really, really excited for it. So thank you both for being here today. Thanks for having us. I was saying we're three years back. That's, we must be doing something right. Yeah, thank you. 
Sean, we did it again. Uh, do we have a tech tip for today for our listeners? We sure do. Not only do we have a tech tip, we have an entire conference worth of tech tips. Yes. The Penn State University Mac Admins Group had its meeting in July, and they have just posted all of the events and all of the sessions on YouTube. So if you do a YouTube search for the channel PSU Mac Admins, you will find a whole pile of really great information up there, uh, including some sessions by yours truly, where there was cake served. So you'll be able to enjoy that. So just do a search on YouTube for PSU Mac Admins. A whole bunch of really great information up there. Thank you, Sean, for that tech tip. Absolutely. And with that, Jamf After Dark is a podcast from Jamf and is copyright 2024, all rights reserved. Technical details and product offerings may change at any time. So always check Jamf.com for the latest information on our products and services. You can reach out to us if you have any questions or comments or suggested show topics. And of course, Sean and I love fan mail. Simply send a friendly email to info at jamf.com with the subject line, attention to the podcast. We are also a sponsor of the Mac Admins Foundation and several jams are available on the Mac Admins Slack channel. Of course, if you need support, visit support dot jamf.com to open a ticket and get your technical questions answered and once again special thanks to our guests this week anna and jeff and of course our audio engineers the m&ms themselves merlin and martin who make us sound great until next time for cat garbus i'm sean rabbit and for sean rabbit i'm cat garbus we will catch you after dark again soon and we hope to catch you at jnuck good night good morning good afternoon and goodbye most fabulous Jnuck ever. <laughs> <laughs>